Pinto, yeah. Well, according to this, if, if 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 5 seconds, 4, 3, 2, 1, and with it, with air. Welcome this afternoon to every creature television and the broadcast of Reese Howell's Intercession Continuing. My name is Brian Mason and we will be continuing in the book of Daniel. Today we look at chapter 6 and we will see what there how God used his intercessor. This man, Daniel, who had been called by God and mightily used by God, yet here we see that he had to face up to a new situation and no shallow man would have gone through in that situation. And it's those who are prepared to give their all to God who will know what it is to be in the heavenly places or what it is to have the very depths of God. And as we draw aside this afternoon, we look into the deep things of God. We seek encouragement. And we seek to be built up. Thank thee, O Father God, that we can come aside and turn to thy word in these days of great testing, these dark days, yet days when we know, O God, that you have not abdicated thy throne that you are the still the same God who was the God of Daniel. And God, you proved yourself day by day to Daniel, situation to situation, as the unchangeable God, the God who met the need of Daniel, and the God who has met the need of ourselves through thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask thee, O Father God, that we will see this afternoon, not man, but thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in all his beauty and all his loveliness, and the one who came to dwell amongst us and took upon himself our own nature as man that we could be the sons of God, having been washed and cleansed through his precious blood, when we have become partakers of the divine nature. Because when we receive Christ, we receive God. O oh, Father God, all is committed to you, that the Holy Spirit will bring his own light upon thy word, his own life upon your word, that we will not be seeing the words of man, but the words of eternal God. Thank you, O Father God, for we ask this in the name, above all other names, that of your Son, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, and for thy glory, and for thy glory alone. Amen. In chapter 6 of Daniel and verse 26 we read, I make a, de a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion 
shall be even unto the end. What emphatic words those are spoken by an heathen king. For Daniel had convinced this heathen king of the holiness and almightiness of God. That is what God can do when he finds someone who will give their all to him, who will obey him, and will let God by his Spirit live and work in and through that person. Daniel had been taken into captivity into Babylon during the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. He'd gone from Israel, uh, from Jerusalem, from his own native country, and be placed in a heathen kingdom to be trained to serve a heathen king. But Daniel did not forget his place. He did not forget his God because he was only interested in God. And we see here what God can do through a man or a woman who were totally abandoned unto God and not concerned with the things of themselves. Daniel, yes, he was trained for three years into the ways of the Babylonian kingdom. And we see him at work in that kingdom. He served a number of kings, some of them not mentioned in the scriptures. And the previous king to Darius, Belshazzar, had promoted Daniel to the third ruler in the land because Daniel had interpreted the writing upon the wall. Yet that same night, Belshazzar was removed by God, because Belshazzar had defiled, defied God. He had used the vessels, the silver and gold vessels, which had been taken from the temple in Jerusalem, and placed in the hand the temple of a heathen god by a previous king, King Nebuchadnezzar. Now we find that Darius was the king and a new kingdom. The Medes and Persians had taken over from Babylon. Yet we find here with Daniel a man who was now in the position that he'd been seen by King Darius as someone very special. And he had been placed to rule that kingdom. Daniel, the captive, the nobody had been placed to rule that kingdom of Babylon. The God himself could rule that kingdom through Daniel. Great are the mysteries of God. But yet he can still do this working through those who are his. There's no, there's no shallowness with Daniel. 
and there will be no shallowness with those who are totally committed unto God, not attracted by the things of this world, for it's from the throne of God that the river of God flows and flows right into our hearts. The life of God through the Holy Spirit flows into our hearts. And the prayer of God is Jesus. Christ Jesus, enthroned in our hearts. That's a wonder in itself. That God should want to have such fellowship with his creatures. It's an amazement. And we can say quite honestly that our hearts are warmed by the very love of God. Because he loved us so much that he gave his own son to suffer and to die in order to bring repentant sinners into a living relationship with himself. Yes, let us encourage ourselves that God will go to any length in order to win to himself those for whom he laid his own life down. Can we, just like Daniel, not give our all to God? Daniel gave his all and he proved God moment by moment. And undoubtedly, King Darius saw in Daniel someone who was so different to anyone else who served the king. Not surprisingly, Daniel was appointed. Three presidents were appointed, first of all. And then the king decided, ah, Daniel, he's different from all the other rulers. I can trust Daniel. He's of a different spirit. The others are concerned with what they could get. Daniel was concerned with what he could give. It wasn't that he had material things to give to a king, no. But he gave himself in service both to God and to the king Darius. What confidence Darius had in Daniel that he knew that whilst Daniel was in charge of the kingdom then he would make sure that the king was not robbed of that which was his own, that there would be no corruption, and that should any be found, it will be brought to light and be dealt with. Now, what did the other presidents and the princes think of all this? They did not like it. There was a spirit of jealousy amongst them. And they were determined at any length to remove Daniel 
so that they will be able to fulfill what? Their own selfish desires. Then we read again in chapter 6 of Daniel and verse 5. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. That's quite remarkable. That these men who were so set against Daniel, in verse 4 it says, neither was there any error or fault found in him. That these princes and presidents had to admit that there was no fault or error in Daniel. A remarkable admission from his enemies. That's God. God had done such a deep, deep work within Daniel. He changed him and made Daniel that nothing at all was a concern to Daniel except pleasing God and fulfilling the work which had been given to him through King Darius. Now these presidents and princes, what did they scheme up? They thought that they found something absolutely foolproof and that there would be no way at all that Daniel would be around for much longer. They went to King Darius and we find in verse 7 their plot, their scheming, their devising. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counsellors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make firm a, a degree that whosoever shall ask petition of any god or man for thirty days save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. So there must have been a den of lions already there. And it would have made no difference if every lion in the world had been in that den. God would have looked after his own man. The king, for whatever reason, had not realized that the one man who was missing amongst those who had gone before him was Daniel, his trusted counselor, his trusted president. And the king was taken in by these men. He hadn't considered what this meant. He had not at that moment thought of Daniel. And he signed the writing and the decree. Oh, these men thought, now, oh, we've got Daniel. No way can he continue. And what does he tell us in verse 10? Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. And his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, 
he kneeled down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Now the decree was only for thirty days. Daniel could quite easily have thought, oh, I, I will leave it, I'll wait for the thirty days to go past. And then I'll continue doing that which I did before. Daniel was not such a man. Because he knew his God. And his God meant more to him than any decree of any man or of any kingdom. He would not compromise. He was used to praying three times a day. And he continued to do so, knowing that his God would honor his servant. That's the same today. When there is so much compromise, so easily, to compromise the things of God. And especially to compromise the need to accept God's way unto himself through the provision of that perfect sacrifice of his own son. It's still the same today as the day that Christ himself gave his own life on that cross. That there's no other way unto the Father except through the Son. Because no one else could offer that sacrifice to appease the wrath and take the judgment which was due on all mankind, due upon every man and woman. And our beloved Christ gave his blood so that whosoever will come to him and seek a pardon will receive the pardon of God when their sin has been repented of and the blood of God's own son cleanses away that blood. That's what's at stake in these days. So much is compromised and sought to bring in an easy way unto God. A way which just says, oh I'm sorry. Yet doesn't have any change of heart any change of life and the old sinful life remains. Yes, Daniel knew what it was not to compromise. And as the church, that's the body of Christ, the priesthood of believers, those who know what it is to have Christ within their hearts. Having been born again of the Spirit of God and become a new creature. Yes, in these days of compromise, there we dare to be different. We dare to stand for the old truths. 
we dare to stand for God in Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yes, as with Daniel, he had to pay a price for his stance. And those who do not compromise on these basic truths will also pay a price because they are not accepted by the system. Yes, but God, he's the one who accepts and takes them on like he did with Daniel into the deep things of himself. Nothing of the shallowness of compromise here on all to do with knowing the heights and the depths and the breadth of all that God has given in Christ. And the life which has Christ dwelling within by his Spirit and taking on those who are his day by day, building them up, encouraging them in the midst of all that goes against them. Daniel was reported to the king. His enemies couldn't get to the king quick enough. And they told him about Daniel praying. In other words, Daniel had broken the decree. When the men told the king of Daniel, oh, the king realized that he had been taken in by these men and he had made a vast error of judgment. And he sought to do all he could to preserve the life of Daniel. Now, he realized, Daniel realized, and these men who were against Daniel knew that the law of the Medes and Persians could not be altered, not even by the king. It couldn't be reversed. So what happened? Daniel was taken and placed in that den of lions. And in verse 16 we read, Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Remarkable words from a king, a heathen king of a heathen country. But he'd seen and he knew that Daniel was made of different stuff than those who had condemned him to the, like, the den of lions. And the king, against everything which said otherwise, expected Daniel to be delivered by this God. So the king left Daniel and went back into the palace 
and had a most troubled night. And the following morning couldn't get to the den of lions quick enough. And in verse 20, we read, And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of whom the living God is thy God, whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions. Well, he'd already been there all night. He would have been devoured long since. Verse 21, Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. The living God had triumphed. Verse 22, My God hath sent his angel and have shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O King, have I done no hurt, that God had protected and preserved his servant, his servant who had been faithful to him. Isn't that the same in these days? God looks after those who are his, even in persecution, even those who have to pay the ultimate price and are martyred. But yet God himself is with them right until the end when they step from this world into the glory. When they go into the other world God is with them. Because why God is living within them? For when we have Christ and we are in Christ, we have the Spirit of Christ within us. Here on earth, having the Spirit of Christ within us, so the Spirit of Christ is still going to be in us. When we step as it out, wear out from this world, and go into the next, into the glory. Oh, we see here, the king was so impressed by what had gone on, Daniel was taken out of the den. And what happened in place? His place was exchanged by those who had been the means of condemning Daniel to that den. And they were cast in, but they had no God to preserve them. Have you got a God to preserve you in these days? The God who has provided the means whereby you can have the, the certainty of everlasting life through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Should you not, then like those cast into the lion's den, you'll be cast from the presence of God because you have not availed of God's means of salvation through his Son. You might say, oh, you've been very, very harsh here. 
We don't have a God who is all love and no, and no justice. Otherwise, it would not be a God who would have given his son to die for sin. Yes, a God of justice, but yet God himself in Christ took the due punishment for sin and accepted the judgment and the wrath of God in order to reconcile whom? Repentant sinners unto a holy God. And we find that King Darius was so moved by all this Verse 26 again, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Where is the trembling and fear today of seeing a holy, righteous and pure God? and sinners seeing themselves as sinful before God. For he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. God like he was in the days of Daniel, is still upon the throne. He's still in control. Our eyes are not upon what's going on in this world. No, our eyes are on the other kingdom, the other world. And encourage this afternoon that through God's word God as he did with Daniel and had the power over the lions still has the power today to see through that which he has decreed to take place and that is that the gospel will go to every creature Jew and Gentile alike and that God the Son the Lord Jesus Christ himself where it is recorded of him I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Yes, you may be discouraged and thinking, oh, the gates of hell are prevailing. No, our eyes are not there upon what's happening around us or in the world. Our eyes are upon the one who is at the right hand of the majesty upon high, who has all authority in heaven and earth, who cannot deny himself and cannot deny fulfilling that which has been declared through his own word. I will build my church, no one else's church, his own church, the body of the redeemed, the blood bought and the blood washed, the ones who know that he lives in and in them, the ones who know 
that he is their life, a life going on with him, growing more and more into him, a life which is taking from Christ the spiritual gifts, the spiritual life, of wisdom and knowledge, of righteousness. For righteousness is Christ, taking from him sanctification. For holiness is Christ, it's all in the person of Christ. And as we go on day by day, as in the days gone by, perhaps in the 1930s or even later still, he was still talking about entire sanctification. That's what's open to us, even today, that we can take of Christ the gifts which he has to offer of his own life, which are all spiritual gifts, not the material things that are sought after today by much of what goes under Christianity. No, the deep spiritual things of Christ, of God himself. Are you looking to grow into Christ? Looking to go on with him? Looking to grow in him? And he growing in you? Then you will know what is meant by entire sanctification as we go from strength to strength in him, weak in ourselves but strong in him, and all will be fulfilled, all will be to the glory of the Father. And we thank, thank thee, O Lord, for this afternoon and for thy word, thy precious, precious word, which has encouraged us once more and built us up in thyself. And all that has been said is for thy glory, O Father God, that you are all in all, in all things, and will have the final say in all that takes place all that still has to be fulfilled. Amen. Thank you for being with me this afternoon. I shall be back tomorrow for the Keswick Convention continuing at 2.30 British time. Goodbye.